In this video, we're going to cover the topic of formal charge. Formal charge is a way of helping us determine which of different Lewis structures that we can write are better. There's a way to calculate formal charge for a particular atom in a Lewis structure. So let me just first draw a Lewis structure here. We'll draw a Lewis structure for water. And we're going to go ahead and calculate the formal charge for uh, oxygen in the water molecule. If I want to calculate the formal charge on an atom, I first find the number of valence electrons in that atom. So we know, for example, that oxygen has uh, six valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to write in six for my number of valence electrons in the oxygen and water. Now we're going to subtract the number of lone pair electrons that surround the oxygen atom, which are one, two, three, four. And finally, we're going to subtract half the number of bond pair electrons that surround the oxygen and the water. And since each bond has two electrons in it, the number of bond pair electrons connected to this oxygen is one, two, three, four. So my formal charge then becomes six minus four minus half of four, which is two. Six minus four minus two is zero. And so our formal charge for our oxygen in water in this particular Lewis structure is zero. Now we're going to use the idea of formal charge to decide between which of two Lewis structures of carbon dioxide are better. So if we take the CO2 molecule and we draw Lewis structures for them, what you'll find is that there are two different Lewis structures that could potentially be drawn. In one case, both oxygens are doubly bonded to the uh, central carbon. And in another case, you can draw a Lewis structure in which one of the oxygen atoms is triply bonded to the carbon, whereas the second oxygen is singly bonded to the carbon. Now we're going to use the idea of formal charge to help us decide which of these two is better. So here's how we'll do it. Let's go ahead and calculate the formal charge for this oxygen atom. You might remember, formal charge, that's going to be the number of valence electrons minus the number of lone pair electrons minus half the number of bond pair electrons. So we'll do oxygen 1, uh, oxygen 2, oxygen 3, and oxygen 4. And we'll call this one carbon 1 and carbon 2. All right, so we'll do oxygen 1. Number of valence electrons is 6 in any oxygen. The number of lone pair electrons, let's see, there's one, two, three, four. We'll subtract half the number of bond pair electrons. Each bond has two electrons in it, so we have four bond pair electrons. One, two, three, four. Half of four is two, so six minus four minus two, that's zero. So the formal charge on this particular oxygen is going to be zero. Oxygen two is actually identical, right? I mean, it's got the same number of lone pair electrons and the same number of bond pair electrons. So we'd calculate this as six valence electrons minus four lone pair electrons minus half of four bond pair electrons will give us a formal charge of zero. All right, now we're gonna do carbon one. Well, all carbon atoms have four valence electrons minus the number of lone pair electrons. This carbon atom has no lone pair electrons. And we'll subtract half the number of bond pair electrons, which two per bond, one, two, excuse me, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Half of eight is four. And that gives me, for carbon one, a lone, excuse me, a formal charge of zero. So all three of these atoms in this particular Lewis structure have a formal charge of zero. Let's see what we get if we apply this to uh, these particular atoms in this Lewis structure. So we'll take oxygen three, that's this one, six valence electrons in oxygen, minus how many lone pair electrons? One, two, three, four, five, six. Ooh, we're already at zero. And then we're gonna subtract half the number of bond pair electrons, half of two, half of two is one, 6 minus 6 minus 1, 
is minus 1. So this particular oxygen is going to have a formal charge of negative 1. Let's do oxygen 4. Well, we've got six valence electrons again, minus two lone pair electrons, and then minus half of one, two, three, four, five, six bond pair electrons. Remember, two electrons per bond. Half of six is three. Six minus two minus three, that's a plus one. And then if we do this particular carbon atom here, carbon two, four valence electrons in carbon. That particular carbon has no lone pairs and it's got how many bond pair electrons? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Half of eight is four, so four minus four is zero. So we'll go ahead and just make that a zero. Now there's a couple of other things we want to keep in mind when thinking about formal charge and evaluating between two Lewis structures. First is that the best Lewis structures have formal charges on all atoms as close to zero as possible. This is known as the electroneutrality principle. And it's pretty easy to see that in this particular Lewis structure, all of the atoms have a formal charge of zero. So that's going to, according to the electroneutrality principle, this is going to make this Lewis structure better than this one, where we have a atom with a formal charge of negative one and a different uh, atom with a uh, formal charge of positive one. There's a second thing to keep in mind when drawing Lewis structures and assigning formal charges, and this would probably make sense, but negative formal charges are best placed on more electronegative atoms. So let's remind ourselves what electronegativity means. You might remember that electronegativity is how well an atom pulls electrons towards itself when it's in a bond. So if we look at uh, the periodic table, we might remember that electronegativity increases in this direction. You know, we ignore the noble gases, and then after ignoring them, we recognize that fluorine is the most electronegative element in the entire periodic table. Second most electronegative element is oxygen. And so we're going to expect formal negative charges to go on oxygen. But generally speaking, we don't see positive formal charges going on oxygen. That's usually a no-no. And if I look here on this particular Lewis structure, I see a positive formal charge on a very electronegative oxygen. That's telling me that this is probably not a good Lewis structure for this particular molecule. So on the basis of both the electroneutrality principle and the fact that we reserve negative charges, not positive ones, for more electronegative atoms, we're going to say, you know, this Lewis structure where both oxygens are doubly bonded to a central carbon is going to be much better than this one. What's interesting about this is this, these, these two ideas, they harmonize with this idea that oxygen atoms, identical oxygen atoms, both bonded to the same carbon atom, are going to do so in an identical way because there's really no way you can tell the difference between these two oxygen atoms. Identical oxygen atoms in identical uh, spaces around a, a carbon should should behave identically. It shouldn't be the case that we're going to have one oxygen atom then singly bonded to the carbon and another one triply bonded to the carbon. Nevertheless, we see how assigning formal charges to Lewis structures help us determine better Lewis structures when we end up drawing uh, two different types.